What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we are looking at how to subtract decimal numbers. Let's go! Okay, so if you're trying to learn how to subtract decimals, it probably means you can subtract whole numbers. So, good news, this lesson is not going to be too challenging for you. If you can already subtract whole numbers, subtracting decimals is kind of easy. We just need to learn a couple of extra new things. So, let's jump into question one. Question one says 8.39 or 8 and 39 hundredths, subtract 6.8 or 6 and 8 tenths. And I'm going to use my steps at the top here to help me do this. Step one says line up the decimals. And really, this is the major new thing that we're going to learn today. We need to make sure that we are lining up our decimals so that we get everything into the correct place so that we don't make any small mistakes subtracting the wrong digits. So how am I going to make sure I do that? Well, we're going to, as always, make sure we put our titles on the top of our column subtraction. A bit like this. Boom, done it. Okay, so this is how I like to set up my subtraction questions. I have the titles above where the numbers are going to sit. I have a nice clear column for my decimal and I'm ready now to put my numbers in place. So 8.39 is made up of eight ones. So I'll put that eight in the ones column and then I'm going to put my decimal nice and clearly in the decimal column. 3 tenths and 9 one hundredths. Then my second number is 6.8, so I have 6 ones, decimal point, and 8 tenths. But hold up, I'm not ready to start yet. Step two says placeholder, and this is really important, okay? So we have this big gap here, because I have three digits in my first number and only two digits in my second number. I have to make sure I have equal amount of digits in both questions. So what can I add here instead? That's right, a placeholder a zero that has no value, because think about it, this zero has not changed the value of my 6.8, it's still 6.8, just looks a little different because it's 6.80 now, but it now means that my hundredths column is now complete. Okay, so step three just says subtract, and I'm gonna do that as normal, starting with the smallest value, which in this case is my hundredths. So nine subtract zero is nine. Three subtract eight, I obviously can't do it. If I have three fingers, I cannot take eight of them away. So I'm gonna to have to look next door and borrow a whole one from here, take that to a seven, make the three a 13. 13 subtract eight is five, put back my decimal, obviously that's really important, and then seven subtract six is one. So my answer to our first question is 1.59, or one and 59 hundredths. Let's have a look at another example. So first things first, line up my decimals, and I'm gonna do that by making sure I put the correct titles above my columns ready. So here we go, boom, there we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see a few differences here. Now I have the thousandths over here because we can see that I have three digits after the decimal, so I'm gonna need the third column after the decimal as well. And I've made sure I've left a whole column for my decimal. That's gonna help me make sure I keep them in line. Okay, now I'm ready to put my numbers in place. 34.002. So 34 is made up of three tens, four ones, a decimal, zero tenths, zero one hundredths, and two thousandths. Now I can subtract the next number, which is 2.729. First thing to notice, all my decimals are in the same line, but I also have this gap that I need to put a placeholder into. So let's do it, put my placeholder there. Now I'm ready to start. Start where? My smallest value. And 2 subtract 9, I cannot do. So I'm going to have to look next door. Well, there's nothing next door, so he's going to have to look next door. Uh-oh, nothing next door again. So this 0 will have to look next door to the 4. Okay, good. I found something. So I can knock the 4 down to a 3 and make that a 10 in the tenths column. Now let's start again with my 2 and 9. 2 subtract 9, still can't do it. So again, I'll look next door, nothing there. But now if I look next door, there's a 10, which I can knock down to a nine and borrow a whole one over into my hundredths column. Now when I start again on my two and my nine, can I do it? Still can't do it. But when I look next door this time, I can see a 10 that I can knock down to a nine and put my one in that column. Wow, okay, pretty stressful start. Let's see if we can do the thousands column now. 12 subtract 9, yay, we can do it, we get a 3. Looking at this column closely, it was a 0, then it was a 10, but now it is a 9. 9 subtract 2 is 7, and again, same thing for the tenths column, it was a 0, then a 10, and now it's a 9. 9 subtract 7 is 2, 
put back my decimal point, and now I'm into the ones column, three subtract two is one, and in the tens column, three subtract my placeholder zero is still three. So my answer is 31.273, or 31 and 273 thousandths.